Hey, this isn't a traditional Leo Talks because it's not very planned out, it's fast, it's scribbly, it's kind of unstructured, but I played some Far Cry New Dawn recently and it got me thinking about stuff. New Dawn is a standalone expansion and a direct sequel to Far Cry 5. The first time Far Cry has done something of the sort. I don't think this game is really worth your money and I don't think it's worth your time and I'm also not sure who the target audience for it is supposed to be. If you're looking for what's become at this point a traditional Far Cry game and you've not played the others, I recommend you play Far Cry 3 for its excellent story and the gameplay that all later Far Cry games copy and are based on. If you've already played Far Cry 3 and want what's basically a map pack for that game set in the Himalayas, play Far Cry 4. If you're curious about the American setting of New Dawn, I would honestly just play Far Cry 5 because that game does everything New Dawn does better and with less frustration and it's actually set in America and not, you know, weird Mad Maxi dystopian future. If you've played all these games and you're looking for a more immersive or hardcore Far Cry experience that's a bit more gritty, grounded, and realistic, New Dawn is the literal farthest thing you can possibly get from that, so I'm not sure why you're looking for it here. It's the most arcadey the games have ever gotten, with damage numbers and RPG health bars all over the place. No, if that hardcore immersive experience is what you're looking for, play Far Cry 2, which is so different from all the others that it's basically not even in the same franchise. The story is dark and mature, the arms dealers, disease, and the socio-economics of war-torn third world countries. The gameplay is challenging, reactive, and the world pushes against you, not because of inconsistent rules, but because it's really alive and you're just another soldier in a land full of soldiers. You're not special, neither are your allies, and everyone is expendable. Guns jam, alliances shift, and the nature and vegetation around you itself seems hostile to everyone attempting to fight within it. The game is inconvenient as hell, but it's doing this in a realistic and immersive way. Finally, if the colorful Mad Max vibe is what you enjoy from Far Cry New Dawn, play Rage 2, which recently just came out at around the same time, has a zanier world, much better art direction, a way juicier visual style, extremely good game feel, and certainly much more interesting weapons and abilities. I think the fake RPG leanings that Ubisoft are obsessed with these days are hurting the publisher's creativity, but also the core execution of moment-to-moment -moment gameplay across all of their games since they all take inspiration from each other. For the past two console generations, Ubisoft has cemented themselves as being about this idea of open-world games that hand the player an array of options for how to play. It's not immersive sim levels. They'll never really reach the heights of Dishonored or Metal Gear Solid 5 in terms of player choice and gameplay, but they always offer the dichotomy of guns blazing or stealth and made each playstyle exceptionally viable if you put in the work or understood how to execute each of them. By the way, that's another game that you should play if you're into the whole marking everyone with a camera and then taking them out from stealth. If that's what you like from Far Cry, then Metal Gear Solid 5 is literally that. Like, the whole game is just that, and it is fantastic. The new UB games don't offer this anymore. This approach of, hey, play how you want, it's viable either way. Even though they still pay lip service to it. Far Cry New Dawn is a lesser offender of this than Assassin's Creed Odyssey and the upcoming Watch Dogs Legion based on the word of mouth from players who've tried the game at E3, but I think it's very telling that New Dawn's best moments are the ones in which it feels the least like itself and the most like the older games. I've also come to a realization about new Ubisoft games that should be a damning indictment of their design ethos, and it's that the player puts in all this effort and all this work in order to pump up progression, but the reason they do that is simply to convert the game back into its predecessors. What I mean is, you do all this work just to turn the game into playable form again, to turn it into what it used to be. They put in all these RPG elements and all these numbers, not to push the game to new heights, but to make you start from a lower place to make you claw back up to what the game already is supposed to be. You basically do chores in order to be permitted to do that same plan and execute gameplay you're used to be able to do. And if you're not willing to waste your own time like that, your moment-to-moment -moment play experience is constantly compromised by the way all of these games are now structured. To make matters worse, Ubisoft are relying more than ever on recycled content before this used to be a criticism, but now it's literally the case, without hyperbole, without exaggeration, it's just a fact now. Whereas before it was just something that players like to, you know, throw at Ubisoft's face and kind of poke them about it a little bit. Now it's actually the case. To finish all the content in New Dawn, you have to play the exact same outpost three times, each making things slightly more difficult and adding more obnoxious and frustrating enemies. More obnoxious and frustrating. That's 
the word I'm using for a reason, because that's what they are instead of being intelligently challenging. The same applies to Odyssey, which contains thousands of locations that all play fundamentally the same, with even less incentive to be experimental with your gameplay tactics than previous games. Again, I remind you, previous Ubisoft games were criticized for being repetitive and copy-paste, but the reason that these new games are more so is that attempting experimentation in new Ubisoft games will lead to bad situations because your statistics and abilities lock you into a single playstyle that's insulated from all the others. This prevents you from trying out new tactics, it prevents you from improvising, which is something that you could always do in the old games. All of this is really bad, and I hope Ubi fixes it or dials back on a lot of it, because while the setting of Watch Dogs Legion, for example, is absolutely phenomenal, if the gameplay systems are so transparently set up in order to push time burn and potential shortcutting via microtransactions, then I think letting Clint Hawking lead the game's development, who is the legendary designer that gave us Far Cry 2, it's just not going to be enough to produce an experience that starts interesting, stays interesting, and ends interesting all throughout. I want to close this video by making a distinction between forced repetition and potential repetition, and this came to me because I played New Dawn in parallel with a replay of Metal Gear Solid 5. Metal Gear Solid 5 permits potential repetition, in that it allows you to make the experience repetitive by yourself. However, it doesn't necessitate it beyond the shitty helicopter rides, because all of Snake's actions are available to you at nearly all times. This means you can improvise and come up with crazy tactics on the fly if you feel like it or if you're pushed into doing it. It rewards quick thinking and creativity, it lets you poke at the system and try stuff out. You can make the game boring for yourself, but you don't have to, in the same way that you can make Devil May Cry boring for yourself, or you can make AC1 boring for yourself. You can finish DMC games by mashing the attack button, but you don't have to do that. And you're discouraged from doing so, not just because of the scoring system, but because fighting exactly the same way is naturally more boring to you in your brain than trying out different attacks and different moves which are all effective in different ways. The game pushes you to play in a more varied manner quite organically. The style meter is just there to nudge you along if you're the kind of player who catches on more slowly. The same applies to something like Dishonored and even some Assassin's Creed games. Again, that's why criticisms of AC1 being repetitive are so much more hollow than they seem to be when you realize a lot of it is the player's own choice in how they're playing and how they're not. But with Far Cry New Dawn and AC Odyssey, it's not potential repetition that you contend with, it's forced repetition because you actually don't have a choice. By necessity of these games very structure, you will only ever have access to a limited action pool at the same time simply as a matter of viability, because let's say you have access to a bunch of actions, but only 20% of them are truly, say, lethal, only 20% of them are reliable, only 20% of them are actions that you can actually trust when you're playing. Some of your actions won't do a lot of damage, so they basically become unusable, you pretty much just have to throw those out and take them out of your head. In New Dawn's case, grinding each outpost three or more times, as well as each expedition three or more times, is just not exciting even when you do have your full action pool, because it becomes very obvious that you're only doing it to fill a progression bar. Assassin's Creed Odyssey works the same way, where vertical progression is king, and any creativity is actively punished by the game's design. This might be fun for some people, even in the long term. But to me, and mind you, I'm a guy who loves grindy gameplay, I'm a guy who loves to tick numbers up, I'm a guy who loves to fill up meters and bars, I love that MMO light gameplay, but it's fucking dystopian because you probably spent hours of your life working a job in order to purchase a product in which you'll spend hours of your life working a fake job until you're allowed to actually play the game, and when you do actually play the game, the different stuff you can do isn't even that different. Expeditions in New Dawn are the exact same objective every single time even though they're being placed in different maps because you're being chased in each of them and then you have to do wave defense in each of them. What that means is there's less variation possible for the player to make their own fun and to express creativity in gameplay. It's no longer player paced the same way a stealth arena would be with the kind of mechanics that these games give you. And this isn't goddamn Fortnite or a tower defense we're talking about, because those games in their single player or PvE modes, they're built to permit player expression through the defensive gameplay, through the different structures you can build. And that's how they get their variety, and that's how they get their strategy and tactics. When it comes to just wave defense or being chased around a map when you're 
an infantry unit with a gun in your hands, it's just not very varied, it's not very interesting. It's not different, it's gonna be the same every time, because the structure and design of the game itself prevents you from doing anything too creative. This isn't an essay, it's an unstructured rant, so it doesn't need a conclusion, but I'm gonna fake a conclusion for you anyway, the same way Ubisoft fakes making real RPGs, by being all sloppy and drawn out and, and unnecessarily long about it. The pseudo-RPG structure of recent UB games is damaging to the player experience and the lifespan of the game, which is counterintuitive at first glance, but it's also true and it makes sense when you think about it. Since all of a player's time expenditure is centered and focused on vertical progression, instead of expanding their knowledge of the game's behavior, or instead of attempting new strategies via more horizontal systems exploration, all player experiences are directly defined and directly dictated by the developers. This is not cost effective, and this is actually very exhausting for Ubisoft to do, if they think about it from a more holistic perspective, because it means that every single thing has to be accounted for by the developer instead of allowing players to make their own fun and, and branch out horizontally and try out different mechanics and try out different tactics and put together different strategies that are, you know, dictated by the community and, and developed by the community. Ubisoft, in a bitter twist of irony, are doing the exact opposite of what I've been begging them to do since Assassin's Creed Unity, which is to go more systemic, more emergent, deeper into the immersive sim direction, which eschews excessive RPG elements and statistical binding in favor of mechanical exploration and interesting combos of player actions that make various interesting results emerge. Like throwing a slip dart into fire in AC Origins, or putting a spring razor on a bottle and throwing that at a guard in Dishonored, or even putting a piece of C4 on a guard or object, attaching a fault into it and triggering the C4 in midair as it passes by the player's actual target in Metal Gear Solid 5. Notably, none of these moments of gameplay have anything to do with any numbers, did you notice? They don't have to do with numbers or statistics, they're not quantitative experiences, they're qualitative experiences. They're differences in kind, not differences in scale. They're not about how much you do a thing or how hard you do the thing, they're about how you do the thing. And I think ultimately, that's what players find the most interesting. And since I'm basically an unofficial Assassin's Creed channel, even though I do a little bit of everything that I enjoy, I will say that this is what players enjoy about Assassin's Creed. It's not clearing a map full of icons that we liked, even though we did it and even though we liked it. It's not pushing DNA synchronization to 100%, even though that's a cheeky challenge we issued to ourselves and each other. It's not just running around clearing content, even though that's what we did. The content was an excuse. It's an excuse to engage with parkour. The collectibles are just a justification to do interesting movement, which used to be varied, used to allow you different tactics in the moment. The content was an excuse to engage with stealth, which could be item-based, crowd-based, or traditional, and you, you picked that. You decided. The content was an excuse to engage in combat, which could be simple and repetitive, but offered a shocking number of tactics available to the player up until Revelations. You know, starting with AC3 and forward, combat variety plummeted, it became a much more flow-based play experience, and you could do less interesting things in it, but you could still do pretty interesting things in it. To Ubisoft, please stop pushing vertical progression as the only valid approach to your games. It's exhausting for you, it costs you a lot of money, and it doesn't lead to interesting game design. Allow players freedom, allow players creativity, let them explore the various mechanics of your system in ways that don't punish us for experimentation. And to players of Ubisoft's games, consider very strongly branching out and starting to buy and play other games, because you'll start to realize that everything you enjoy Ubisoft doing, lots of other games are doing much better. The only thing that Ubisoft has to hold us Assassin's Creed players hostage with anymore is the story. And you and I both know that even that is beginning to fail us. And that's not because Assassin's Creed's story is good or bad, it's because Assassin's Creed's story is not Assassin's Creed's story. Not anymore. Just like how interesting horizontal systems exploration has been shot in the head and replaced with a lifeless doll of vertical progression, the fascinating narrative exploration of Assassin's Creed's themes has been reduced to a juvenile power fantasy about demigods and magic monsters, children's cartoon ideals of chaos versus order, lacking any nuance whatsoever. 
terrified to talk about anarchism, terrified to talk about fascism, terrified and, and completely scared to even mention the, the gray, the nuance between, you know, how do you get, you know, peace versus freedom, like which one matters to you more. And all of this is bolted onto a platform, not a game anymore, but a platform for selling DLC and selling microtransactions and selling you Skinner boxed games as service content that's regurgitated and uninspired week after week and day after day. Oh, and if you're wondering why I don't use any footage of AC Odyssey in this video, it's because I uninstalled the game today. Maybe I'll go back at some point to do my curated Torment of Hades and Judgment of Atlantis playthroughs, but honestly, right now, these days, today, the moment I hit that uninstall button, I felt like I could breathe again. It felt like a weight and a tension were just lifted off of me. Can you imagine how sad that makes me feel? That an Assassin's Creed game, a game in a series I love, made me feel that way when I fucking deleted it. I should never, and you should never, and no Assassin's Creed fan should ever have to say that sentence about a game in their favorite series that they love and adore and cherish so much. Thanks so much for watching, see you later. Go play some games in which numbers aren't everything, otherwise you might find it pretty boring to stay sneaky.